Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Booming Queen and today we are gonna have a look at a very famous or maybe not so famous gameplay between Oleg Korniv and Magnus Carlsen this game was played in Reykjavik uh, in the year 2004 so the game was uh, Sicilian Dragon which is also one of our favorite openings uh, till here uh, it simply followed the theory well, the first interesting move was uh, when Magnus played the move pawn to b5. And this variation, uh, an open dragon, this is known as Rosa variation. And usually, this move b5 is not, uh, it is not considered, uh, like you know, it's not much reputed. The simple reason is uh, you simply lose a pawn. But it's again interesting because you, though you lose a pawn, you get uh, activity in bulk you get a, a lot of activity so it is playable uh, however usually after a6 uh, first you play a6 then you go for b5 but here we have the simple thing ah uh, yeah after c4 we have b3 queen to b8 king to a1 and rook c c8 the rook simply went inside so until this position, uh, White uh, or Oleg, Oleg, uh, sorry if I'm pronouncing it wrong, had an advantage of nearly around 1.4547s uh, of that range. But after the move, Knight to e2, and this advantage is because of the pawn. So, but after the move, Knight e2, he got the chance to get it back, and uh, yeah, it's simply. Bishop take on g4. Well, here I would like to ask you that what happens if I take the bishop? Yeah, what happens? So, if nothing happens, then did Carlson just play the blunder? <laughs> well, no. The point is if you take my bishop, I'll take your pawn on e4 and unleashing a superior attack over here using the pin with my dragon bishop so yeah so going back after bishop g4 we have e5 instead well the point is after you take my pawn here your bishop is blocked so uh, it's a so after this maybe i can take your bishop here okay so after e5 we have Bishop takes on f3, e takes on f6, and after exchanging almost everything, after the move queen to b7, we are in the technical part of the game. So, what's the meaning of technical part? Well, it's simply that you now, from the technical part, means that you simply, uh, there are not much tactics, but you actually wait for tactics. So, technical part is almost based on positional play it's all about maneuvering your pieces it's all about you know how you place your pieces on the board for the future uh, attacks so yeah somewhat like that so here it starts with rip g1 now you may ask how does it help so it's simply uh, in front of the king and also pinning the pawn so future ideas may be of going knight to f5 and you know invading in this particular manner so uh, Carlson immediately spots it and plays the move rook to c5 yeah this little subtle thing positional chess yeah it's actually beautiful so I look to g3 and here the point is say after you play the move rook to f5 I want to go king to b2 uh, say after this short line so basically the point is that I want to keep the technical play going. I want to simply, you know, try to maneuver my pieces uh, and improve the activity of my pieces more importantly. Because here, if you see all the uh, pieces of white in this particular region itself, uh, except the pawn, whereas in black's case, they are not uh, much well co coordinated. However, this is 
uh, media box so well the thing is that you try to take advantage of the little of the tiniest possible things however it's completely equal so going back after rook g3 we have rook f2 c8 king to b2 well the idea was simply to put uh, pressure over the knight so the king supported it and queen to d7 is a typical blunder like it was the almost the game deciding blunder well could you find the move hmm pause the video and think for a while ready well kudos to you if you found the move knight to a4 it's a brilliant move well the point is at first sight at first sight the point is that you simply making a good piece bad because here the knight is controlling a lot more squares uh, when compared uh, to here it's uh, controlling very less squares but the point is that how important those squares are and from knight to a4 it attacked the rook first so say you save it uh, say you save go here and the knight to b6 is coming with a crushing fork so that's why in the game we have pawn to e5 and the rook is gone so simply takes takes and knight comes to e2 and here magnus is a whole piece down and after a few moves uh, the game almost ended and here the game continued a little uh, and after queen to f4 like until this uh, sorry yeah until this position white had some uh, advantage of nearly one point something but after the move queen to f4 it was almost equal and there is a must here is a must play move could you find it well perfectly correct if you found the move f5 the point is that now if you play knight to h7 i am coming with queen to c5 and uh, your king is vulnerable uh magnus played it though but after a move <laughs> he here first he played e3 and which has made a lot of difference so after knight to h7 we have f5 uh, a delayed move queen to d4 and after this the game ended in the very next move which is knight to g4 and uh, magnus resigned the point is if you take here i'll take here and uh, you cannot win this particular end the game with two doubled pawns double pawns so the point of showing you this game was that even champions lose <laughs> so don't you know don't take loses too hard on yourself neither take them too easy because losers only losers can teach you the most even more than the victories so yeah that was the whole point of the video that even the champions lose so that's it for today write in the comments how you felt about this game was it was the game worth it and did you like my analysis if you have some suggestions to improve our analysis then please do post in the comments and that's it for today thanks for watching ta ta bye bye